Now, let's look at what happens to body composition when you gain weight or when you lose weight. Because as I said recently, some people have asked me these questions, and then we want to get into a little bit about how you might be able to manipulate some of these things to change the normal expected response that we've observed. So when you gain weight, 75% of that will be fat tissue until you get fatter and fatter then more of it will be fat tissue and less of it will be lean. And 75, 75% fat, 25% lean. Keep in mind lean is not just muscle, it's organs. So that's how the body comp changes as you get fatter. Now, if you want to lose weight and lose body fat, as long as you're in the mid-range of this, it's going to be 75% fat loss and 25% lean loss. If you start to get leaner and leaner and leaner, getting down to say the 15%, 20% body fat range, 50% of the loss will be fat and 50% will be lean. So what you're beginning to see and understand is the body does not want to give up its fat. And the leaner you get, the more aggressively it holds on to its fat. And you just, you can't change this, it won't give it up. Now, in my peak of weight, I was 265, I was very fat, and I had an underwater tank to do body composition analysis, because I used myself for years and years as a lab rat, doing all kinds of different experiments with different diets to see how they all affected these things. And I learned that in the early stages of being 265 and getting down to, say, 245, that close to all the weight I lost was fat tissue, very, very little lean. As I began to get down below that into the 230, 235 range, I hit that expected percentage of 75% loss of fat and 25% loss of lean. As I got down further, down to 205, 210 pounds, it changed to be about 50-50. Then the lowest I ever got was about 175 pounds and this was in my vegetarian years. And I wanted to see if I could get leaner yet. So, I actually began fasting, eating nothing. And I lost another 10 pounds, and all of that was lean tissue, all lean tissue, no fat tissue at all. I didn't get any more fat off. So I already stripped all the fat off that my body would not let me get any more off. It just, it just doesn't work that way. It, it keeps it. So these guys and people who get really, really lean, they really got to work at it to get down there because it gets hard. And after a while, it's just, it's futile because you'll just keep losing lean if you keep pressing it, keep pushing it. It's just that your body's not going to get rid of the last couple kilograms of fat. There's just no way it's going to happen. So that's the expected change we see when you lose weight and gain weight. This is how your body composition changes. Now, can you do anything to manipulate this? That's the question I'm often asked. Okay, we know that a high carbohydrate diet pushes carbohydrates into fat storage, and that a low carbohydrate diet will allow fat to be released from the fat cell where it can get burned for energy. So that's the basic biochemistry. So with a low carb diet, you can actually manipulate this and alter the expected range change when you lose weight. You can cause more fat to be lost and less lean to be lost if you follow a low-carb diet. Conversely, if you follow a low-fat diet, it will do it the other way around. You'll lose more lean and less fat because you're putting everything into storage. So that's how diet composition affects this. And of course, the calories you consume are important. They determine to some extent the rate and the type of food you eat determines the nutritional and hormonal profile in respect to how the biochemistry of the body is going to work. And that's what we see. So guys who lift weights, they can also reverse this to some extent, that they can add muscle tissue. Now the typical top-level bodybuilder who did not use steroids, after years of training, will have added about 30 pounds of additional muscle to his body. That's about pretty much the upper limit. Some of the steroid boys will get around 60 pounds. 
So you can certainly add muscle because of training, and that could help one avoid the expected ratio changes that we see when you either lose weight or gain weight. So that's the way you work to manipulate these things. You use these special techniques of diet composition and training, and that will change the expected ratios from what they actually are. And you can't change this that much because it's very difficult to add a lot of muscle. Like I say, the top level bodybuilders have maybe 30 pounds more muscle on their body than they would if they had not trained. So even for someone to train and put on about 10 pounds of muscle is a lot. And a lot of these workout programs that are going around today that are working on functional training, they're not conducive to building a lot of muscle strength because the trainees are trying to improve their functionality and they're not necessarily trying to improve their muscle mass because that's not what this training is all about. Of course, the best training to, to use to build your muscle mass is a combination workout of resistance training with between 8 to 12 repetitions and multiple sets and also isometric exercises that will build muscle. And by using a combination of both isometrics and resistance to fatigue training, that's what I call that model, fatigue training, you'll cover a wider range of muscle function and that will in turn develop those separate aspects of muscle function and each one will cause muscles to grow in response to that type of training. So it's best to have some variety in your training program and then that will help you overcome these expected changes. But just keep in mind the, the the more you lose, the leaner you get, the harder it is to lose even more because everything starts to change. Your metabolic rate slows in response to the loss of some of the lean tissue and you have to eat less and it's, it's difficult to overcome. It gets hard. It gets hard to get very lean and it's hard to stay really lean. Okay, I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.